Folks, I just have to say that our little Marjorie Green is growing up so fast. She's finally becoming a big girl politician. And she issued her very first public apology. This is really heartwarming to see. So initially, what happened was she said that mask mandates are like the Holocaust. She then doubled down, tripled down, and then denied having said what was said on television. And now, after some weeks of soul-searching, being introspective, she's coming out with an apology. And she's saying, what I said was actually wrong. Now, the way that she says it was a little bit sus. Nonetheless, she did apologize. Take a look. I'm very much a normal person. And I think it's important for me to always be transparent and, and honest. And I just want to tell you all, I'm, I'm really, really lucky. Uh, I was blessed with, I am blessed with amazing parents. And my dad just passed away in April. But I will say he taught me some great things. And one of the best lessons that my father always taught me was when you make a mistake, you should own it. And I have made a mistake and it's really bothered me for a couple of weeks now. And so I definitely want to own it. This afternoon, I visited the Holocaust Museum. The Holocaust is, there's nothing comparable to it. It's, it's, it happened and, you know, over six million Jewish people were murdered. More than that, there were not just Jewish people, black people, Christians, all kinds of children, people that, that the Nazis didn't believe were good enough or perfect enough. And the horrors of the Holocaust are something that some people don't even believe happened. And some people deny, but there is no comparison to the Holocaust. And there are words that I have said, remarks that I've made that I know are offensive. And for that, I want to apologize. And I am, I am just fine and very glad to be able to come out here and do that because I believe it's important. I believe that if we're going to lead, we need to be able to lead in a way where if we've messed up, it's very important for us to say we're sorry. Okay. Now, one thing that's incorrect is she says, I'm just a normal person. Mm, no. I get that what she's trying to say is, look, we all make mistakes and I'm no different, but you're not a normal person. Like, you're dumber than the average person. So, that's just one thing that needed to be corrected. Uh, the question is, okay, if you're apologizing for this, which you should apologize for, are you going to apologize for comparing Democrats to Nazis? Because she also did that as well. So she was asked this question. After your visit to the Holocaust Museum today, earlier during recess, you compared Democrats to the National Socialist Workers Party. Is that something you still stand by after you reflected on everything that the Nazi party did? This was literally her answer to that. You know, socialism is extremely dangerous. And so is communism. And anytime a government moves into policies where there's more control and there's freedoms taken away, yes, that's a danger for everyone. And, and I think that's something that we should all be wary of. Uh, anytime that you have things like cens censorship with social media, um, you know, anytime where we have things being taught where one race is being told it's racist, like critical race theory, those are problems. These are things that we're seeing in policies coming out of the Democrat Party that I think are dangerous for everyone. And, and that's why I'm against them. And, and I'll, I'll never stop saying I'm very much, very much on track. And I'll never stop saying we have to save America and stop socialism. There's no veteran that signed up to serve in the military. And there's nobody that fought for our country because they wanted America to be a socialist country. They all did it because they wanted America to be a free country. So in other words, since she didn't directly address that head on, um, she does stand by her comment comparing the Democratic Party to Nazis, even if she thinks that mask mandates aren't like the Holocaust. And that reporter says, so you still stand by that analogy. She responded by saying, that's the important thing to remember. Thank you guys so much. We got to head out to vote. So <laughs> she's just like, they're asking a question and she just gives whatever answer she wants to, even if it's unrelated to the question. Uh, but what's interesting about that non-answer is that she finally gave us a little bit of insight into what her 
definition of socialism is. Not that like we all get to choose our own definitions, but what she believes socialism is. And her definition of socialism is social media censorship and critical race theory. This is what Marjorie Greene, a lawmaker, a grown woman, thinks socialism is. <laughs> First of all, something that is unilaterally carried out by private companies, love them or hate them, agree with it or disagree with it, by definition, isn't socialistic. Censorship by Facebook, like Twitter banning Trump, that isn't socialism. It's really not that complicated. It means workers own the means of production. And you could uh, factor in, you know, public ownership of a lot more entities, more, you know, intervention within the economy. Sure, I think that that's all perfectly uh, relatable to socialism. But at the end of the day, it means workers own the means of production. It doesn't mean censorship from Facebook and Twitter, you fucking moron. <laughs> and if she's going to consider censorship as like one of the defining characteristics of socialism, state governments across the country are cracking down on the right of U.S. citizens to engage in BDS. Are you going to condemn that socialism, Marjorie Greene? Are you going to condemn the laws Republicans are passing around the country, like in Florida, where they are making it easier to legally run over protesters? That obviously is an attempt to stifle freedom of speech. Are you going to condemn that socialism, Marjorie Greene? So, I mean, like, it doesn't matter how much she tries, she still gets everything she says wrong. Like, she takes two steps forward and 18 steps backwards. This person should not be in Congress. This person is not very bright, and that's an understatement. So, I mean, regardless, take it or leave it, she apologized for uh, one aspect of her offensive comment but then she let us know again in a million different ways how stupid she is and it's just like if i'm a republican i'm running far away from this individual i don't want her to represent me but um this this is what the party loves i mean this is the future of the republican party i wouldn't be surprised if marjorie green in the coming years was a prominent contender in a presidential race so it's just this is what the Republican Party is. They've embraced their stupidity, and it's not surprising considering this party has pandered to people just like Marjorie Greene for decades now. I mean, they shouldn't be too surprised that the crazies have taken over their party. If she really wants to do better, she should try to just, like, not say anything because she's going to open her mouth and idiotic things are inevitably going to come out. So just, like, stop saying things. Stop, stop putting yourself out there. And maybe... Maybe come back, think harder before you make statements, and you might be a little bit less of an embarrassment to yourself. But she's not going to take my advice. I'm just a crazy socialist, so whatever. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. Recovery mode, my brain ideas.